Hello from the Dome of Corruption in Washington, D.C. I am here for the day. It is my birthday, my 30th birthday. So thank you uh, for joining me on this momentous occasion. Uh, I'm a little hungover. Uh, pro- actually, I'm a little drunk still. So just keeping it real. Uh, a little hungover. I uh, had to be up for an early TV interview. I was on with Roland Martin, uh, TV One anchor. He's uh, used to be a CNN commentator, all that business. Nice guy. So I was on with him at 7 a.m. So I had to be up. I had to be there at 6 a.m. I didn't get home till I don't know 3:30. So this is this is a power through kind of day. So I'm not high if it looks like I'm tired. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I just want to start by saying thank you for making the end of my 20s so wonderful. Without you guys, there is no Jordan or TYT politics. Um, And I want to have a little fun today. Um, I'm going to cover some serious stuff too. But I want to have fun because it's my birthday and I say so. So I'm going to have some fun. And I'm going to start with the obvious. Yes, he's let us down in some areas, but I say it's freak out time. For the Democratic establishment. It is panic alarms, smoke coming out of the, the, the chimney, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it is time, if you can, this, it's getting late to change course. And I say, bring back Bernie. Bring back Bernie. Yes, he, he left Tim, Can- Tim Canova high and dry. Uh, He endorsed Hillary, all these things. We've gone over it. I've reported on it. Um, But if the election were held today, I think it's a toss-up, and I think Hillary Clinton might lose. Uh, I, I, for most of the time, felt she would win. But I'm looking at the recent poll numbers, and it's not good. And I'm also looking at her desperation, which is to pivot back and try to woo millennials, which I did a video on the other day. You could check out on TYT Politics. It's too late for that. She made her decision. She picked a re- pretty much a Republican as her vice president instead of Elizabeth Warren or, you know, somebody more progressive. She's courted every Republican donor known to man. Um, she surrounded herself with every neocon who loves war known to man. So millennials aren't going to go for you. And frankly, I just tweeted out before, I mean, Bernie Sanders, she's using Bernie Sanders to try to woo millennials. Bernie couldn't even get over 150 people. That's all he got, 150 people on a Saturday at a local college. So obviously he's not running anymore. He's not going to have thousands of people. But if if Bernie can only get 150 people, mostly young, for Hillary Clinton, I mean, she needs a lot more than Bernie Sanders. She's going to need to, you know, show up with Beyonce (laughs) uh, uh, by her hip at college dorms and play beer pong or something because it ain't going to happen. You're not getting millennials. They, they don't look at Trump as Armageddon. They don't look that the world is going to end, even though the establishment keeps drilling it in their heads. And I, even though I'm 30 now, I'm still a millennial. So I can tell you, they're, they're a lot smarter than the TV pundits uh, like to give them credit for. TV pundits, the Morning Joe crowd. I was watching Morning Joe talk about Hillary Clinton's uh, wooing of millennials this morning. Uh, they're just clueless. First of all, how about... Having some millennials as hosts on TV, if you're going to talk about it, or at least as guests. You have all these older white people with nothing but privilege, no student debt, and, you know, pretty much all they, they breathe the fumes of the horse race. So Morning Joe's talking about it, and they're stumped, because the bottom line is, it's not the message, it's the messenger. Hillary, Hillary Clinton has a record that makes Mitt Romney look like a, you know, consistent liberal Democrat. Hillary Clinton has flip-flopped more than anyone known to man, including since the primary was over. And millennials know that. And forget millennials. I'm just talking about uh, young adults. Bernie won under 40 overwhelmingly, okay? Young adults, millennials, out of college, whatever you want to call it, they, they don't, it's not a slam dunk to them that A, Hillary Clinton's going to help them. But if you, if you put a gun to someone's head, what is Hillary Clinton's message? She doesn't have one other than, Stronger together, which means nothing. And Donald Trump is, you know, Hitler. That's not a message. It's not going to work. So here is what I think. And again, it's my birthday. I'm just having some fun. It's unlikely it's going to happen. But um, 
I think it should happen. And I think at the end of the day, as transactional as the Democratic Party is, and as transactional as the Clintons are, the Clintons will throw out. So this is all about how do, how do I win? Okay. The Democrats right now, it's a, it's, it's a coin toss, are faced with the possibility of a President Donald Trump, a Republican Senate, a Republican House, and Ruth, Ruth Bader Ginsburg is in her 90s. You know, you never know who's going to retire, who's going to die, whatever. And two more Republican judges. So I think they will, if it comes down to it, they'll sell Hillary Clinton down the, down the water. I just want to read you, I mean, some recent polls. It's astounding. It's astounding. Okay. Quinnipiac University poll. Ages 18 to 34. A month ago, Hillary Clinton was polling at 48%, which is, all, which is abysmal. 48% is not good. Uh, you, she should be well over 50. She should be closer to 60%, age 18 to 34. Polling at 48%. Now, she's polling at 31%. She's lost 17 percentage points in one month. And you know who's picking up that slack? Gary Johnson is up 13 percentage points since the same time period. Gary Johnson uh, was at 16%, and he's now at 29%. So Hillary Clinton went down 17 points. Gary Johnson went up 13 points. Donald Trump lost two percentage points. Uh, Jill Stein is up four percentage points from a month ago. So Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, they're both abysmal right now. Hillary Clinton is 31% among millennials. Donald Trump is 26% among millennials. But the problem is, even though Hillary Clinton is ahead of Donald Trump in millennials, I mean, this is why I said, and many progressives said when she was picking her vice president, you, the most important constituency you need to win this election is millennials and the Bernie Sanders voters, not what they call never Trumpers or, you know, Republicans who might, because of their morality, uh, vote for you. She, calling, she could have had Bernie Sanders as a vice president. Nobody talked about that, but... He, he was a strong number two to you. He brought in millions of people. He won 22 states, frankly, more if you account for fraud and suppression. She didn't want Elizabeth Warren because, frankly, she hates Elizabeth Warren. It's, it's well known Hillary Clinton's not a fan of Elizabeth Warren. So then you have, uh, she doesn't have millennials. She's struggling with white men. She's, she is behind Obama's pace uh, among African Americans and Latinos. Uh, last poll I saw, she was behind Obama, five uh, percent with African American. I believe it was between five and six percent Latinos. Hillary Clinton needs record number of Latinos to come out. And you know the sorry about that. The Beltway punditry said, "Oh, uh, Latinos slam dunk. They're going to come out and force against Donald Trump." Well, I mean, right now she's she's behind Obama's pace. I mean, I'll, re I'll read you more polls. I, I try not to get too heavy in the polls, but I mean, if, if, you're, if you're looking at it today, I mean, every trend line is in Trump's favor. Um, general election. There's one national poll that has her up five points. It's NBC News, Survey Monkey, four-way race, Clinton at 45, Trump at 40. Uh, right under that, there's a national poll, L LA Times poll, Trump up five. So the, the, you could find polls that have her up five, Trump up five. More importantly, uh, Florida, which, if you know your American history, Florida is what gave us Bush. Well, actually, the Supreme Court. But Florida, one of the most critical swing states. It's, it's Ohio and Florida. Uh, Clinton up one in a four-way race, which is a statistical tie. So she's not even up. Up one means it's a, it's a tie. So she's, that's, that, that's with Johnson at 9% and Jill Stein at 2%. Um, head to head, Trump versus Clinton. In Florida, tie. It, it's a tie. It's not even a her up 1%. Ohio, let's find Ohio. Uh, Trump up three. Uh, last poll, Suffolk University. Uh, Pennsylvania, he's closing the gap. Clinton up eight. Last poll I checked, she was up 10. So Trump, Trump is gaining ground. Um, I, I think that there's also something else that the pundits aren't talking about because they are praying to God it doesn't happen, and they're not even mentioned in it. WikiLeaks keeps saying they're going to release more damaging documents about Hillary Clinton. The presidential debate is Monday. It would definitely make sense for them to release it the night before or the day of. Uh, in, my, in my coverage of Julian Assange, he usually, he, he usually, when he huffs, it's not just puffing. 
he has something serious, and he's been teasing this for a while, that there's something very, very damaging that will deal-breaker uh, kill her numbers. And if it's dropped the night before or the day of the debate, they're not going to have a lot of time to try to spin it. So I think uh, everything is kind of working against Hillary Clinton. I also think that, frankly, uh, President Obama, not a lot has been talked about this because his approval rating is rather high right now, but millennials uh, don't, aren't uniform. They don't all love President Obama. A lot of them are disillusioned by President Obama. So he's been going to campaign for her. Elizabeth Warren's been going out to campaign for uh, Barack Obama. A lot of millennials, uh, particularly uh, Bernie Sanders voters, aren't so in love with Elizabeth Warren at the moment because she did not endorse, endorse Bernie. She kind of waited till after it mattered, endorsed Hillary. Um, so the candidate, the, the people who are out uh, stumping for Hillary Clinton, the pundits think, oh, she's got the star power. But among millennials, um, they don't have the same star power than that they would have maybe three, four years ago. Also, um, you know, I'm not trying to discriminate and only focus on millennials, but the reason the millennial vote is so important for Hillary Clinton is she's got the older corporate Democrat vote shored up. So she's got to find pockets uh, to, to get an advantage over Trump. She, millennials is one of those areas. Latinos is one of those areas. Afri- African-Americans. Well, if you're, if you're trailing Obama's pace in African-Americans, if you're trailing uh, Le- Obama's pace in Latinos, if you're at thir- down 17 points among millennials, I mean... Last time I checked, you can't go shopping for aliens. That's not a voting block. So I, I don't know where she's going to pick up the votes. Meanwhile, there's no statistical analysis of this yet. It's just my gut. If Trump, uh, you know, fake pandering to the African-American community bumps him up, I don't know, three or four percentage points, that's something. Um, I think Trump, uh, if, he has a deb- if, if he has the first debate, I think the bar is so low for him if he doesn't uh, say something crazy outrageous, which is always possible. If he doesn't stumble on stage, if he strings together three sentences on foreign policy, the media probably will declare him the winner because the bar is so low. And Hillary Clinton, frankly, runs the, uh, runs the chance of being too scripted, too rehearsed, too prepared. This is an outsider populist uh, election. They are looking for that. People are looking for that gut check moment, that visceral moment where they can look at someone and be like, you know what? I want something different, and I think this guy's different. She, she's just she's talking like a politician. Trump has that. So, how would this work? Bringing back Bernie. Uh, here's what I think. I, tr- I truly believe this. I'm not just trying to stoke you up or get you excited. I think that if the scenario that I'm envisioning possibly happening happens, and WikiLeaks releases something, Hillary Clinton is in damage control. Day of the debate. The debate happens. You know, Trump uh, is pretty much like he was in that town hall two or three weeks ago, just packaging hot air, but doesn't say anything too horrible. Uh, Lester Holt, who is the moderator, he's NBC News' nightly anchor. He's not known for, like, you know, being a crazy challenging challenger, uh, challenging interviewer. I don't see him uh, really pressing Trump on too many things. Uh, debate moderators. We've heard from Chris Wallace that he, quote, doesn't want to be the truth squad. Uh, I think Lester Holt, for for lack of a better word, is going to be about moving it along. I don't particularly think he's going to be pressing Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton for that matter. If Donald Trump is not, let's say Donald Trump is just, it's declared kind of like there wasn't like a huge clear winner. Uh, Trump held his own. That's damaging for Hillary Clinton. She needs, she needs to knock him out in that first debate to stop this movement. So, First debate. Let's call it a tie. Uh, you know, Trump held his own. Clinton didn't stumble that bad. Nothing gained, nothing lost. With these poll trends, uh, the Midwest states going the way they are with Ohio uh, moving over to Trump. Um, all, Mi- Minnesota, I saw a poll. She's only up six points. Minnesota, as blue as they get. And you start seeing Hillary Clinton behind in national polls. You start seeing Hillary Clinton consistently behind In uh, swing state polls, I'm talking uh, leading up to the second debate. I would I I would not put it past the Democratic establishment led by Barack Obama, by the way. Um, I wouldn't put it past them to go to the Clintons and say, for the good of the party, you know. Maybe your pneumonia, whatever you got, you got health problems, whatever it is. 
I would not put it past them. And again, this is wishful thinking, but you have to be realistic. I mean, you're talking about an unprecedented thing. Sure, Republicans have had the House, the Senate, the presidency, the Supreme Court before, but you're talking about Donald Trump, who they, they seem to think is you know, the next coming of Lucifer, and the Supreme Court maybe being turned around to Republicans for the next 50 years. So this is a uh, unique danger in the corporate Democrats' um, mind that I think they potentially could go to the Clintons and say, you know, you need to either, you got you to gotta turn this around right now or you need to step aside. And they've already, they already have the health thing as an out. Uh, I also don't think the Clintons want to go down as, uh, you know, having the, representing the worst candidate in American history but lost to a fascist. So I do believe, and it's too late after the second debate. This would have, have to happen before the, after the first debate, before the second debate. Uh, Bernie Sanders would need two debates to really have a chance this late in the game. Um, I think Bernie Sanders uh, would need time to kind of, you know, bring, turn back the clock, get the rallies going, this and that. If you're talking after the, after the first debate, if, after the second debate, uh, you, you can't bring somebody in a month before the election and definitely win even Bernie Sanders. So uh, it's wishful thinking, but I, I don't think it's completely out of the realm of possibility because you want to know something? If Hillary Clinton is down in Ohio, if Hillary Clinton is down in Florida, if she's down in Pennsylvania, if, she, if those poll numbers don't go up among millennials, if, they don't, if she's not closer to Obama's pace with African-Americans or Latinos, it's going to be a, an outright fucking panic in this city where I am and all around the money, the money class of this country, especially her donors. And because they are so out of touch, you know what they'll do? They'll have more fundraisers or they'll, they'll just keep pushing this anti-Trump the, Trump theme on CNN. But uh, I think it's possible. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I think that uh, the polls I'm looking at, I mean, I'm not a pollster, but the fact that it's even close to Florida is very scary. Florida, it, for, for, the, for the Democrats, Florida has one of the highest... Latino populations of the country. Uh, they sh- she should be crushing him in Florida. Um, Trump won by 20 percentage points in Florida, where Marco Rubio was a senator. So obviously the Republican primary is different than the general election. But at the end of the day, if she's behind in Ohio, if she's behind in uh, Florida, that makes Pennsylvania a must win. That makes North Carolina more of a must win for her. She, she does not have any wiggle room uh, in Colorado, um, you know, they thought she was going to, might have a shot in Arizona, Georgia. Uh, the polls here show Trump up in that. Trump, I mean, if he keeps going the way he's going, possibility, possibility, Michigan could be in play. Same thing with Wisconsin. So, uh, again, wishful thinking, but I don't think it's out of the, out of the, um, out of the realm of possibility. And at the end of the day, to button it up, the Obama coalition, as they say, it was young people, African-Americans, and Latinos. She is down 17 points among young people. She is behind Obama's pace among African-Americans and Latinos by five to seven percentage points. And we're a month, a month and a half till Election Day. So if she's counting on the coalition, and by the way, you keep hearing Democrats say, well, we have the superior ground game. Trump's and the Republicans, it's like a makeshift ground game. I mean, that might be true, but at the end of the day, you, you can't, like, break somebody's door down and make them go. They have to be enthused for the candidate. And I'm, I'm sorry, I've seen it around the country. This woman does not, Hillary Clinton does not, uh, she does not uh, elicit enthusiasm. She just doesn't. Um, and it's too late, really, to change her delivery, her style, the message. You know, it is what it is. They made their decisions, and now you got to live with it. Now... Bernie Sanders, uh, I think, uh, you know, I don't think he's going to be playing hardball behind closed doors, like banging, you know, saying, I told you so, you know, I'm here. You know, Bernie is an upstanding guy. He's an upstanding politician. He's endorsed her. I think he's going to roll with the punches unless told otherwise. But I do think, you know what, for the, for the good of the party, and I also think realistically, if they made the decision that Hillary Clinton cannot successfully run and she has no chance I, I'm even starting to consider they might skip Biden and go straight to Bernie because Biden's not going to fix those millennial problems. Uh, he, he'll do better among African-Americans, Latinos, but I mean, at the end of the day, he's, he's the vice president. He's not been campaigning. He did not 
he did not, um, you know, whip up millions of young people for the last year. Uh, I think they would have to go straight to the guy who was crushing Trump. Uh, do I do I give the Democrats the benefit of the doubt that they would be this wise to bring back Bernie? No, it's a, again, it's it's wishful thinking. But it's my birthday, so I'll do as I please.